Must uh, was deliberately bending the law or misinterpreting the law. Therefore, the activity was plain illegal. The blood farming industry uh, does harm Iceland's image. Und die Vorstellung, dass Pferde so gequält werden. 66% were against it. Five uh, supported a ban and uh, that position has not been changed. Doctors, animal doctors who had a lot of money, you know, uh, in their own pockets by, by serving Easter. And Easteka is the biggest owner of Icelandic horses in Iceland. This has been hidden for so many years. We see that the people that we are supposed to trust uh, to regulate the industry, they cannot be trusted. After the war, I was afraid of að nokkur hefði gert þessar hlutir sem að framkomi í myndbandinu ef eftirlýsmaður hefði verið á staðinu. We're standing here in front of the laboratory belonging to the pharmaceutical company Isteka, where blood is turned into PMSG. It's a lucrative business which we've been watching closely for years. The Icelandic company Isteka supplies PMSG to the pharma businesses MSD Animal Health and Seva Santé Animal. PMSG is the active ingredient in the following products for the world market. Pemis G is a hormone extracted from the blood of pregnant mares. You can make serious money with it. Some call it red gold and laws are broken to mine it. What makes Pemis G so valuable? Pemis G controls the reproduction in breeding animals. It synchronizes their cycles and therefore their births. And with that, the processes of industrial meat production. What is interesting is that the blood hormone is produced where keeping horses is cheap – South America, Asia and, as we see here, Iceland. Production costs are cheap, as you can see from the way blood farms are built. Run-down wooden boxes with chewed wooden planks and doors that bear bloody witness to moments of equine torture. We came to Iceland for the first time in 2019. They didn't want us to visit blood farms. I'm not sure that we are happy for the house. Yeah, we will do it. It's of course uh, something that we have developed uh, also for decades and decades. Icelandic economist Olafur Raffansson confirms. Available to the general public. This has been hidden for so many years. So we are just drawing these uh, facts out. Three years after our initial investigation, the blood farmers are still not willing to show their business openly. On the contrary, they are hiding. This blood farm has moved about 500 meters away from the road into a pasture. And they've kept costs down. It's the same rotten restraint boxes and the old tin hut. What we notice is that more and more blood collection boxes have been painted black. An insider later tells us that you can't see blood so well against a black background. We drive around several blood farms, beginning with the ones that attracted attention in 2019 on account of problems. Two blood collection boxes. One is clearly still in use. Cautious and restrained bars lie at the ready. The chewed and restrained box are devoid of grass. The second box is overgrown. In the tin hut nearby, we can see mineral licking stones. In 2019, we were sent away. Yeah, it's off limits, but 
it's, it's really, really unpopular. And, uh, An RAD television team comes with us. It's a good opportunity to raise awareness about the secret blood business. We meet people who live in Iceland and take a dim view of the blood business. So, uh, I think everywhere where you look at it, uh, it, it is an animal welfare issue. It's not only the, the blood volume or the frequency of the blood takings, it's also that these mares, they've, uh, most of them are totally unhandled, they're not used to humans. These images stirred up the public and triggered a debate in Iceland. And they show the scale of the business at the time. 119 blood farms with around 5,300 mares. Blood farm number six. We want to control if it's still in business. We documented extensive mistreatment of blood mares here in 2021. Empty, unused. No sign that horses have been here recently. A walker later confirms this. Economist Olafur Raffenson knows a lot of horse breeders. They are upset about all the blood farm folds. Well, I, I know that uh, many farmers who are, are, are breeding horses uh, are frustrated because uh, animals that can are produced from blood farms come from all sorts of uh, uh, mares. They don't care about their temper or movements or, or breeding. So we, we have uh, on one hand breeders not happy with uh, blood mare foals being sold uh, uh, because that uh, we are trying to maybe breed out of the uh, Icelandic horse uh, bad temper and so forth. Informants have also told us that horse farmers who breed for meat production are no longer achieving the prices they used to for the foals. An Isteka employee confirmed this drop in prices back in 2019. <laughs> Uh, which is a, a, a great nuisance for the farmers. Uh, but it has nothing to do with blood connection. In my personal opinion, you can take me accountable for it, but I think that the uh, slaughter houses may see that the farmer has another way of uh, uh, income from the from the home. Iceland produces horse meat and always has, including for pet food companies in the EU. The slaughterhouse in Salfoss dictates the prices. It's working to capacity. Blood mares are pregnant. The Pemis G hormone level in their blood is at its highest between days 50 and 110. During this time, 5 liters of blood is extracted from them once a week, up to 8 times. It's a time fraught with stress. They have to compensate for their lost blood, take care of their unborn foals and suckle their foals from their last pregnancies. We film a group of blood mares. You can recognize them by the puncture marks on their necks. And we're not welcome, as so often before. Stop this. No. Uh, why you? I, I know why you're filming. Okay, Please so stop. why do we film? Like, what do you think? Just go away. We will not be stopped. The public needs to know about how these horses suffer. We meet Maike Witt, founding member of Animal Welfare Iceland. My first reaction was total shock. I didn't know about the blood mare business, but I think, like most Icelanders, I believed it wasn't really like this, that it was kinder to the horses. And I think, like many others, I was a bit naive about it, thinking everything was fine. Then this film came out and I was truly shocked. The idea that horses are being tortured like this and just a few kilometers from my own front door it was very difficult to accept. We keep driving around, checking on blood farms, hoping to discover one in operation. Some have erected elaborate privacy screens. From the road you can't see anything except the screen. Fencing and a little trailer, a little house on wheels. This blood farm too, unassuming barn, silage bales, Pens. You can't tell it's a blood farm. One day later, there are suddenly cars. Several horses ride by the building and two tractors parked as a privacy screen. You can't see anything from the road. We drive on. We suspect the next building is a blood farm. And we're right. Horses, a veterinarian's SUV and a mobile screen. This time a tanker. 
we want to talk to the blood farmer. We make ourselves noticed. We're seen, but they don't want to talk to us. Instead, they close the gap so we can see even less. We observe from the distance and see two mares with horrendous vein injuries. Later, we show the images to a specialist in equine medicine. She writes about the peed mare. The sutter stitches run exactly along the course of the jugular vein. I suspect that the cause was a severe inflammation of the vein. It's highly likely that bacteria got into it through the punctures caused by multiple blood extractions. It looks like a surgical wound closure. The mare should definitely get a rest. We see mares with bleeding puncture marks on their necks. We also see winning, agitated mares and their foals. Once galloping out of the hall after blood has been taken, others trotting out exhausted, as we have seen so often before. We drive on and show the ARD team the establishment that Isteka presented to us as a model blood farm in 2019. We were not allowed to film then. We criticized the poor condition of the facilities and the associated injury risk for the mares and foals. Now the building is a pile of rubble. The blood collection boxes are still in use, as can be seen from the traces of blood. Blood is never gone in an Esteka contract veterinarian at work. Animals are tortured, harassed and beaten in his presence. This veterinarian doesn't employ clean practices either. She rinses a used cannula, then uses it on the next horse. We head over to Mast in Selfos, the veterinary authority responsible for supervising the blood farms. Mast is under heavy criticism. We talk to their head veterinarian. These are semi-wild horses. Shouldn't they be trained and accustomed to humans? Yes, I think that it is first of all to be able to be and that is Mast is of the opinion that taking blood eight times in a row, as has been done, does not impact the mares negatively. What data are you referring to? And Renstan Okkar bigger of the other Piritaki Istaka have a short mast blood gilding, or Diralatna Semer of Stanley, who have to sampan with thou, or upload replacing um. But this data was collected by Isteka itself, meaning there hasn't yet been any independent monitoring of the blood data. Það er nákvæmlega rétt og þess vegna er núna á þessu ári mun þessi opinbera rannsóknustofa keldur gera þessa rannsóknir. Algjörlega sjálfstætt. 40 years ago, this research institution was involved in a study which Isteka has since referenced. It is worth noting that the author of the study later became an animal welfare officer at Isteka. This study is, number one, very old. It's from 1982. Uh, number two, it's, it's carried out by people that uh, directly benefit from the blood takings. Uh, you are taking 15 to 20 percent of the total blood volume each time. So my conclusion uh, is that there is absolutely no scientific data uh, that can show us that it's okay to take five liters of blood from a pregnant and a lactating mare. But our claim is that MUST uh, was deliberately bending the law or misinterpreting the law. Therefore, the activity was plain illegal. In the absence of a permit, it's illegal. And you after the Varaka Stanum, you ever stum. 
að nokkur hefði gert þessar hlutur sem að framkomið myndbandinu ef eftirlýsmaður hefði verið á staðnum. Ég held að það sé bara almennt þannig. Menn að þú varst að keira bíl og lauraglan er að fylgjast með þér. Þú varst ekki endilega að keira í veru röðu ljósi þegar að lauraglan er akkurat þarna. Og ég held að það sé sama með okkur. Again, we are stopped by an angry horse breeder and are asked not to film or take photos. It was in this very area that we were stopped, pursued and compelled to leave in 2019 by one of the biggest blood farmers. Now, the horse breeder wants to know why we are filming his pastures. Hello. Who are you? Nice to meet you. What's your name? What are you doing here? You ask me something. I don't know you. Who are you? I didn't ask you anything, so please. Yes, we, we, are, it's, yeah, we are filming, right? No, you look like you took me by long. We are allowed to film. I'm sorry. We set off for the next blood farm, planning our next steps on the way. Nobody wants to talk to us. Nobody wants to show us that the blood business is not actually unkind to animals. So we'll try to organize more interviews, including with the sticker boss Anthor Gudlaugson. And find a moment to talk to us on Friday. We would like to know what he thinks has improved over the last three years and whether he's now willing to show the blood extraction process publicly. Okay, thank you Anthor for thinking about it and I hope to see you on Friday. Two days later he cancels. We drive to the Estega blood farm in the north of Iceland. The area is closed off from afar. The Esteka blood farm looks abandoned. You can see privacy boards around the pen and a nailed up gate. The search continues. We drive to a remote blood farm in the mountains. It attracted our attention in 2019 because it was cobbled together from scraps of wood, a life-threatening structure for the mares. The blood farmer lives nearby and we drive over. Hello, hello. Our interpreter speaks to him. Sabrina. Sabrina, he said he only speaks Icelandic and he doesn't want to talk to us. He doesn't want any photos either and he says we should leave. Typical behavior. No contact. Kind contact. We go to his blood farm. The scrap farm. Nothing has changed. Three restrained boxes with injury traps. Metal spikes stick out of the two outer boxes. They are the ends of bars that are pushed through behind the legs of the mares when the box is closed. If a mare resists, injuries are inevitable. Nearby is a pasture with pregnant blood mares and their foals from the spring. At the next fuel stop, we try to arrange some more interviews. Um, I'm calling for a meeting request um, with, with the, agri um, the agriculture minister and... It is relatively schwierig, these Gespräche jetzt to organize. Later, the Ministry of Agriculture declines. The minister will not be giving any media interviews on the matter. We reach Inga Zeeland, a member of the Icelandic parliament who has been fighting against the blood business for years. She has tabled a bill in parliament, among other things. It almost never happens, but uh, foreign lobby groups of uh, sheep, and cat, uh, sheep and pig farmers from mm -hmm. France, Spain and other countries In Italy. were submitting uh, forums on the bill opposing it. This never happens in such a little nation, which shows kind of the scale of the issue. We are taking unhandled mares, unhandled scared mares. We are draining them of their blood in extreme volumes uh, to produce some kind of a fertility drug to, to make pigs, have more pigs in order for us to have cheap pork. We visit farmer Hendrik Lahmann in North Rhine-Westphalia. He opens his barn for us. That alone is unusual. The piglet breeding industry in Germany is defensive like the blood farmers in Iceland. 
There are 150 sows on his farm. Laman uses Pimus G. He does it routinely, but only systematically when integrating young sows into the farm cycle. Why do you use the fertility hormone PMS G? We use PMS G once on young sows to integrate them into the cycle of the herd at the beginning. Do you sometimes use PMS G on adult sows? No, after weaning we never use PMS G on the sows as standard practice, because they go on heat through normal stimulation. Have you ever tried alternatives to PMS G on young sows, in this group or other similar groups? No, not yet. So far, we've always trusted in the things we use, that they're all properly approved and comply with German law. Having had this conversation, maybe we will try something out, try to look for alternatives and see what's available. We show him a short summary of the blood collections in Iceland. What do you think of that? Yes. Those are images that you as an animal welfare organization don't want to see and that we as farmers don't want to see either. That is not our idea of animal welfare or how to handle animals. No doubt about it. Would you be willing to try alternatives to PMSG? I made some inquiries in advance. There are possibilities, yes. There are other things that have a different effect. We'll have to see whether we can use them and whether it is feasible here. What Mr. Lahmann is interested in belongs to a consultancy project led by Professor Axel Wehrend at the Justus Liebig University in Gießen. All in all, the main importance of Pimus G lies in its administration to healthy animals. The use of Pimus G in piglet production usually serves to make work easier and increase efficiency. The origins of this fertility hormone show that Pimus G is no longer up to date. The programs used in piglet production today ultimately go back mainly to research in former East Germany in the 60s, 70s and 80s. So that's where the whole thing got established. Then there was a transition from family farming to industrialized production. In this industrialized production, you have to define working processes, you have to synchronize things, you have to think about people finishing work and leaving the site at the end of the day. And that has led to many things being synchronized, to biological functions like reproduction being controlled and not left to chance. Piglet farmer Marco Wienberg's farm is small, and he currently has 16 breeding sows. He doesn't use PMSG at all, but he used to work on a farm with 600 sows where it was used. At that time, I didn't think too much about it. We were happy that all the work got done quickly and that the farrying was as close together as possible because we didn't have to sit in a farrying pen for days on end or even on the weekend. We wanted our time off after all. We asked him how PMS G was used in the large scale farm. PMS G was used for young sows as well as the adult sows, the whole group. I don't need it for my sows. They all come into heat. If one of them farrows five days later, so be it. Besides contact with boars, do you use other zoo-technical procedures or other things to stimulate the sow's estrus? No, we don't use any other methods because we have air and light, that's all we need. Uh, these fertility problems that they say that the pigs are having are just from the environment that we humans are, are putting them in. Yeah. If an animal is badly kept, I don't think it is as fertile as it would be if it's well kept, because it isn't comfortable, 
A pig has to be comfortable to come into heat and have enough piglets afterwards. Zu rauschen und auch danach genügend Fäckel zu haben. What is the difference between the life expectancy of a pig that lives here with you and in industrial breeding? The difference is that ours live twice as long. They can easily live six years and manage 12 farrowings. Professor Wehren believes it isn't just small flagship farms that can manage without Pimus G, but conventional farms too. Farms have shown that it's possible without Pimus G, and if farms show this, then sooner or later the other farms will eventually have to follow suit, so that blood no longer has to be obtained from pregnant mares for this indication. This product that is obtained here isn't used in Iceland, it is all exported, used abroad, which means our blood mares suffer here for pig breeding in other European countries. Back in Iceland, we have an appointment with the director of the Icelandic Tourist Board. Um, the Tourism Association is of the opinion that the, the uh, blood farming industry uh, does harm Iceland's image abroad and as such will have the potential to uh, uh, damage Icelandic tourism in the long run. The discussion in the in the um, international sphere has been uh, in the form of uh, rather negative um, uh, publications in, in large publications in, in Europe. So we believe that uh, when compared to the economic impact of tourism, the government should look at uh, what's more important for the country in the economic sense. It's not a question of if this activity stops. It's just a matter of when, because two-thirds of Icelanders, they believe this is unethical, they believe this is violating the concept of animal welfare, um, because all of Europe is against this. There would be no guarantee to stop production. The European Parliament first took a position against PMSG in October 2021. Our investigation brought the covered blood business to public attention. In, the, in Europe. Even though it's very cruel to watch it, but it's so important that we have those footage, that we show them around and that we fight against the production, but also the import of uh, PMSG. Iceland's government issued a new regulation allowing the blood business to continue for another three years. So that the only thing the regulation does is to legalize the activity as it was practiced uh, in the past years. It requires a permit. That's all it does. But it does absolutely nothing for the animals. There is no change for the animals. The future of the blood business will be decided again in Iceland in 2025. Until then, reports issued by the supervisory authority will provide a basis for the decision. We will continue to report. Isteka's annual report seems to suggest that former Icelandic contract veterinarians had been having ethical concerns, it says. The amount of blood collected this year was a quarter lower than in 2021. One reason for this reduction is believed to be the difficult staffing situation among vets, but the skill of other vets and the employment of foreign vets prevented greater damage. At least a group of professionals that has done very well out of the blood business is beginning to think about its actions. The government should wake up to the suffering of animals and not sacrifice Iceland's image to the interests of a few pharmaceutical companies and an outdated hormone.